Now, let's go to another topic, the medical-legal aspects of physical injuries. So, under the subtopics, physical injuries brought about by physical violence, okay? By use of force, classification of wounds, legal classification of physical injuries, mutilation, serious physical injuries, and its subparts, administering injurious substances or beverages, less serious physical injuries, slight physical injuries or maltreatment, medical classification of wounds, factors affecting the severity of wounds, fatality of wounds, complication of wounds, and healing of wounds. Physical injuries brought about by physical violence. Okay? By use of force. Okay, guys? Physical injury is damage to the body caused by external force. Physical violence can involve any of the following violent acts like scratching or biting, pushing or shoving, slapping, kicking, choking, or strangling, throwing things, force feeding or denying you food, using weapons or objects that could hurt you, physically straining you, such as spinning you against a wall, floor, bed, etc., reckless driving, and then other acts that hurt or threaten you. Okay? So, with respect to this... Um, topic, it denotes element of physicality, okay? Denote um, an element of using force. Wound. Physical violence on a person leads to the production of wound, which is the disruption of the ana anatomic integrity of a tissue of the body. Vital reaction. Some total of all reactions of tissue or organ to trauma. The following are the common reactions of a living tissue to trauma. Rubor, calor, dolor, and lo loss of function. Okay? Now, let's go to the classification of wound. Okay? Wounds can be classified as follows, according to the etiology, according to rank quick field classification system, according to the duration of the wound healing, according to the integrity of the skin, according to the depth of wound, according to morphological characteristics, according to degree of contamination, and according to severity of injury. Now, let's delve into the specific classification of wounds. Okay? According to the etiology, by etiology it means origin. Okay? Surgical wounds, these are wounds caused by surgical procedure, as, as you can see in the illustration. This is a wound after surgery. Penetrating wounds. These are wounds caused by penetrating trauma. For example, uh, sharp objects. Okay. Um, here in the illustration, the wound is due to stabbing, I think. And then, blunt wounds. Wounds caused by blunt trauma. Okay. Or blunt objects or heart hard objects burn wounds wounds caused by burned injuries according to rank wakefield classification system tidy wounds these are wounds inflicted by sharp instrument and contains no devitalized tissue okay for example if you are cut by a knife such wounds can be closed primarily with the expectation of quite primary healing. 
they are usually with single clean cut. Associated fractures are uncommon in tidy wounds. Examples include surgical incisions, cuts from glass and knife wounds. Untidy wounds, okay? Here in the illustration, it's an untidy avulsed wound on the hand. These are wounds resulting from crushing, tearing avulsion, vascular injuries, or burns, and contain devitalized tissue. They are usually multiple and irregular, commonly associated with fractures. Such wounds cannot be closed primarily and therefore should be allowed to heal by second intention. According to the duration of the wound healing, acute wounds, these are wounds that heals in the anticipated time frame. For example, it will heal within two weeks. Duration of the wound, immediately to few weeks, okay, the time of healing. Examples are wounds acquired as a result of trauma or an operative procedure. Chronic wounds, wounds that fail to heal in the anticipated time frame and often reoccur, okay? It bleeds again. It does not heal uh, on a specific time. Duration of the wound is more than four weeks to three months. Wounds occurs as a result of an underlying conditions such as poor nutrition and etc. Examples include diabetic foot ulcers, pressure ulcers, and venous leg ulcers. Okay. According to the integrity of the skin, open wounds, type of wounds in which the skin has been compromised and underlying tissues are exposed. Okay, as you can see here in the illustration, it is an open type wound. Open wounds can be classified into a, into a number of different types according to the object that caused the wound. Examples include incised wound, laceration, puncture wounds, and etc. Closed wounds, wounds in which the skin has not been compromised but trauma to the underlying structure has occurred, okay? We can call this, um, in layman's term, internal bleeding, okay? Examples are contusions or bruise and hematoma. According to wound depth, superficial wounds, only the epidermis is affected and, and has to be replaced. A truly superficial wound does not bleed and heals within a few days. Examples are most abrasions and blisters, okay, due to the heat of the sun. Partial thickness wounds. The epidermis and par part of the dermis is affected. A partial thickness wound does not bleed. If left uncovered, a blood clot will cover the wound and a scar will form. Full thickness wounds. A full thickness wound involves the epidermis and the dermis. The underlying fatty tissue, bones, muscles, or tendons may also be damaged. It takes longer time to heal than does a partial thickness wound and may last up to several months. According to morphological characteristics, bruises, contusions. So these are closed wounds caused by blunt trauma that damage tissue under the skin without breaking the skin. Okay? As you can see in the picture, that's an example of a bruise. Examples are blows to the chest, abdomen, or head with blunt instruments or hard objects. And then hematoma. These are also closed wounds caused by damage to a blood vessel that in turn cause blood to collect under the skin okay as you can see in the illustration there is hematoma forming 
at the head. Initially, this is fluid, but it clots within minutes or hours. Later, after a few days, the hematoma will again liquefy. Increased risk of infection or past formation is possible. Crushed wounds. Crushed wounds caused by a great or extreme amount of force applied over a long peri period of time. They are often accompanied by degloving injuries and compartment syndrome. Okay, as you can see in the illustration, that is an example of crushed wound. Abrasions. An abrasion is a shearing injury of the skin in which the surface is rubbed off. Most are superficial and will heal by epithelization. Lacerated wound caused by tearing of tissues. Wounds have irregular borders. Loose of tissues is limited to the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Penetrated wound caused by sharp pointed objects like nails have relatively small openings and may be very deep. Example is a punctured wound on foot due to gathered nails. Perforating wound have two openings of one entrance and other of other of exit. Example is gunshot wounds, okay? Just refer to the illustration at the sides in order to appreciate the definitions. According to degree of contamination, clean wounds, no break in aseptic technique, incision is made under sterile conditions, no inflammation is encountered. Okay, so you can appreciate this during surgery. Okay, clean contaminated wound, operative wounds in which the respiratory, genital, or urinary tract is entered and under controlled conditions and without unusual contamination. Contaminated wound, open, fresh, or accidental wounds, operations with major breaks in sterile technique or gross spillage from the gastrointestinal tract, and incision in which acute non-purulent inflammation is encountered. Dirty or infected wounds, old traumatic wounds with retained devitalized, devitalized tissue and those that involve existing clinical infection, okay? These are just matters of reading, guys, okay? These are definition of terms, enumerations, so just refer to your book. If you have questions, feel free to message me. According to severity, simple wounds, the integrity of the skin is traumatized without loss or destruction of tissue and without the presence of foreign body in the wound. Okay, as shown in the illustration. Complex wounds, tissue is lost or destroyed by means of a crush, burn, or foreign body in the wound. Okay, as illustrated in this picture. Also, legal classifications of physical injuries. Under Article 262 to 266 of the Revised Penal Code, physical injuries are classified into the following. First, slight physical injury and maltreatment. Second, less serious physical injuries. Third, Serious physical injuries, okay? So, by its classification, it has its own penalties and requirements, okay? Mutilation. Mutilation means the chopping off of a part of the body which is not susceptible to grow again. Putting out of an eye does not fall under this definition according to the case of U.S. versus Bogel. Article 262 of the Revised Penal Code. Mutilation. It states that the penalty of reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua shall be imposed 
upon any person who shall intentionally mutilate another by depriving him either totally or partially or some essential organ of reproduction. Okay? So, for example, cutting of the um, private part of a male person. Okay? Any other intentional mutilation shall be punished by prison mayor in its medium and maximum periods under the revised penal code. Okay? So, uh, these are all stated in the revised penal code. These are just matters of reading. Two kinds of mutilation. By intentionally mutilating another, by depriving him either totally or partially of some essential organ for reproduction. By intentionally making other mutilation, that is, by lopping or clipping off any part of the body of the offended party, other than the essential organ for reproduction, to deprive him of that part of his body. There be a castration that is mutilation of organs necessary for generation, such as the penis or the ovarium. Okay? When you cut off those private parts. The mutilation is caused purposely and deliberately. That is to deprive the offended party of some essential organ for reproduction. Castration, in other words, consists of the amputation of whatever organ that is necessary for generation or reproduction. The law could not fail to punish with utmost severity such a crime, which, although not destroying life, deprives a person of the means to transmit it. But according to this article, in order for castration to exist, it is indispensable that the castration be made purposely. The law does not look only to the result, but also to the intention of the act. Okay, for example, a doctor um, due to lack or lack of foresight, he neglectfully, okay, cut the vital part of a person. So, is the doctor liable in this provision of law? No, because under the revised penal code, it must be intentional. Okay. It must be done with um, evil intent, okay? Under the revised penal code, good faith is a defense. If the mutilation involves a part of the body other than an organ for reproduction, such as the cutting of the outer ear or arm of the offended party with a deliberate purpose of depriving him of that body part, it is other intentional mutilation, okay, as coined in the revised penal code. Under the second paragraph of Article 262, it is otherwise known as may mayhem. It is the term used for other mutilation, mayhem. The offended, I mean, the offender must have the intention to deprive the offended party of a part of his body. So, intent plays a vital role in this crime. If two people fight with a bolo and a body part, example, the ear, was cut off, there is physical injuries only because there is no specific intent to chop off the ear. But, if he intended to cut it off, there is mutilation. Okay? So, the act is dependent upon the intention of the perpetrator. The penalty when the victim of other intentional mutilation is under 12 years old shall be one degree higher than that imposed by law. Now, let's go to serious physical injuries. 
under Article 263 of the Revised Penal Code, any person who shall wound, beat, or assault another shall be guilty of the crime of serious physical injuries and shall suffer the penalty of prision mayor if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the injured person shall become insane, imbecile, impotent, or blind. Okay? Second, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum period, if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the person injured shall have lost the use of speech or the power to hear or to smell, or shall have lost an eye, a hand, a foot, an arm, or a leg, or shall have lost the use of any such member, or shall have become incapacitated for, for the work in which he, he was there to for habitually engage. Okay? If that person is unable to work, then the penalty is much higher. Third, the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods is applied if, in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the person injured shall have become deformed or shall have lost any other part of his body or shall have lost the use thereof or shall have been ill or incapacitated for the performance of his work in which he was habitually engaged for a period of more than 90 days. Okay? So, there is time element involved in this provision. So, if it is more than 90 days in capacity, what is applied is a heavier penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. The penalty of arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period if the physical injuries inflicted shall have caused the illness or incapacity for labor of the injured person for more than 30 days. Okay? So the time element involved in this crime is more than 30 days. Okay? That is the distinction between um, serious, less serious, or slight physical injuries. So note, if the offense shall have been committed against any of the persons enumerated in Article 246 of the Revised Penal Code, or with attendance of any of the circumstances mentioned in Article 248, the case covered by Subdivision Number 1, of the revised penal code shall be punished by reclusion temporal in its medium and maximum periods. The case covered by subdivision number two by prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its minimum period. The case covered by subdivision number three by prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods respectively. And the case covered by subdivision number four by prison correctional in its minimum and medium period. Okay? So, guys, these are just matters of reading. These are actual provision uh, of law in the revised penal code. Okay? So, we should apply the letters of the law. Okay? The provisions mentioned as of those earlier is not applicable to a parent who has inflicted physical injuries upon his or her child by excessive chast chastisement or disciplining. Okay? However, uh, this provision depends upon the law of the land because here in the Philippines, um, there are other laws that would apply like child abuse law or violence against women and children law and so on and so forth. The physical injury, serious crimes would encompass around like wounding, beating, assaulting, or administering injurious substances without the intention to kill. Okay? 
In the first mention, coming to the point of the injured person who became insane, imbecile, impotent, or blind. Okay? Under the law, insanity has not been defined or qualified by the article, by the revised penal code. Imbecil imbecility infers that the injured person must be of, of pre-adolescent age and that on account of the physical injuries inflicted, there is an arrest of mental de development. Impotency is the inability to grant to the partner sexual gratification. Blindness must be total or involvement of both eyes. If only one eye became blind, then the physical injury will fall in paragraph 2 of article 263. Okay? This is just matters of the application of the law. In the second mention, the following nature and characteristic of the, of the wound or consequences of the injuries inflicted must be present. First, loss of the use of speech or the power to hear or to smell or loss of an eye, a hand, a foot, an arm, or a leg. Second, lo loss of the use of any such member or becomes incapacitated for the work in which he was therefore habitually engaged. Okay? So these three would qualify the crime of physical injuries. There must be a total loss of hearing capacity. If the loss of power to hear is only in one ear, it is a serious physical injury under paragraph 3 of article 263. Okay? As enunciated in the case of People versus Hernandez. Insofar as loss of a hand is concerned, the prosecution must prove by clear and conclusive evidence that the offended party actually cannot make use of his hand and that such impairment is permanent. Okay? As illustrated in the case of People versus Rally. In the third mention, the following physical injuries or, or their consequence are included. Deformity, loss of any other member of his body, loss of the use thereof, or the person becomes ill or incapacitated for the performance of the work in which he was habitually engaged for more than 90 days as a consequence of the physical injuries inflicted. Now, what is deformity? It is a condition of physical ugliness. It must be permanent and conspicuous. Okay? The loss of the front teeth, the development of a pigmented scar on the face, or loss of pina of the ear are considered deformities. However, the development of a scar in covered plots of the body may not be considered deformity because it is not conspicuous and visible. Okay? Now, what is incapacity? It means the inability of the injured person to perform or engage on a work or vocation before he sustained injury. So, in the fourth mention, the injured person becomes ill or incapacitated for labor for more than 30 days and impliedly less than 90 days. Okay? Take note of the time element, elements invo involved of the different physical injury. Administering injurious substances or beverages. Under Article 264 of the Revised Penal Code, the law states that the penalties established by the next preceding article shall be applicable in the respective cases to any person who without intent to kill, shall inflict upon another any serious physical injury by knowingly administering to him any injurious substances or beverages, or by taking advantage of his weakness of the person's mind or credulity. Okay? So, 
This is the provision of the law with regards to administering injurious substances or beverages. This this uh, provision is just a matter of reading. Okay. Now let's go to the elements of the crime of the last preceding article. Okay. So first, the offender inflicted upon another person any serious physical injury. Next, the infliction of physical injury was done knowing, knowingly that the substance or beverage administered is injurious or that person took advantage of the victim's weakness or credulity. And there was no intent to kill on the part of the offender. Okay? So take note, if the offender does not know that the substance administered is injurious, he cannot be held liable under the above said provision. Okay, this is an actual case. The throwing of acid on the face of someone does not fall within the provision because, the, because what the provision contemplates is administering or taking in the injurious substance or beverage. Okay? The said provision is specific only to application of injurious substance or beverages as enunciated in the case of Chong Songko. Okay? The provision does not contemplate of slight or less serious physical injuries which is the consequence of injurious substances or beverages but results only in serious physical injuries. If the administration of injurious substances or beverages is intentional, the crime committed is frustrated murder, okay? Because treachery is inherent when injurious substances or beverages are introduced into the body, okay? Um, take note that uh, discussions with regards to the law are technical, okay? So, if you are confused or if you have questions, message me directly and uh, I will answer uh, all your questions, okay? Now, let's go to lesser serious physical injuries. It is under Article 265 of the Revised Penal Code. It states that any person who shall inflict upon another physical injuries not described in the preceding articles but which, but which shall incapacitate the offended party for labor for 10 days or more or shall require medical attendance for the same period shall be guilty of less serious physical injuries and shall suffer the penalty of arresto mayor. Okay? These are just matters of reading, guys. Actually, if you want to learn these things, you should memorize these things because these are specific provisions of law, okay? Uh, written in the revised penal code. Penalty of arresto mayor is one month and one day to six months, okay? That's the duration of the penalty of arresto mayor okay minimum one month and one day to two months medium two months and one day to four months maximum four months and one day to six months crimes of less serious physical injuries okay a fine not exceeding 500 pesos in addition to the penalty of arresto mayor is imposed when there is a manifest intent to insult or offend the injured person or adding disgrace or shame to the offense, okay? A prison correctional punishment is to be applied in its minimum and medium periods when the victim of any less serious physical injury is are the parents, ascendants, guardian, curator, or teachers of the offender or persons of rank or persons in authority provided that the crime is not direct assault okay 
So, this person's enumerated qualifies the crime of physical injury into a higher degree and penalty. Okay? If you have questions, feel free to ask. Prison correctional minimum period from 6 months and 1 day to 2 years and 4 months. So, that's the duration of the penalty. Okay? Prison correctional medium period from 2 years, 4 months, and 1 day to 4 years and 2 months. So, types of physical injury as can be seen in this illustration. Okay? Any part uh, of the body or a member thereof. Okay? If applied, always take note of the element of time. If more than 30 days or more than 90 days. Because it can be serious, less serious, or uh, slight physical injury. And also take note of the incapacity of the person. Okay? If the person is unable to work, then it is also a classification of slight, uh, less serious, or serious physical injury. Okay? How to determine whether physical injury is less serious or not? First, period of medical attendance, and then the period of incapacity, okay? Like what I said before. Both periods are of 10 days or more, but less than 30 days, okay? That is a less serious physical injury. Third, if the injury requires medical attendance of two days only, but the victim is incapable to attend his or her ordinary work, for a period of 29 days, okay? You should take note of the incapacity, okay? That's the condition precedent. Proof of the period of medical attendance or, or incapacity must be presented. If it is absent, the crime committed is only slight physical injuries, even though the wound actually healed more than 30 days, okay? Because... This now uh, becomes factual and becomes a matter of evidence, okay? Administering injurious substances or beverages. Under Article 264 of the Revised Penal Code, an act by any person who without intent to kill, okay, take note, intent is very important, shall inflict upon a woman any serious physical injury, by knowingly administering to her any injurious substances or beverages, or by taking advantage of her weakness of mind or credulity. Elements. Offender inflicted upon another any serious physical injuries. It was done by knowingly administering to him any injurious substance or beverages, or by taking advantage of his weakness of mind or credulity. He had no intent to kill. Okay, very important. Because if, if he has intent to kill, then it, it qualifies the crime to maybe murder. Okay? Or attempted murder. If the accused did not know of the injurious nature of the substances administered, he is not liable under this article. Okay? Intent plays a vital role in this crime. Take note, if the offender had any intention to kill, the crime would be frustrated murder, okay? Just like what I said before, the injurious substance to be considered as poison. If the accused did not know of the injurious substances he administered, he is not liable under this article, okay? Administering injurious substance means the introducing into the body the substance, Throwing more than chemicals or poisons on the face or upon the body is not contemplated in this article because it is not administering, okay? The law is very specific. It coined the term administering. So, there must be intent to give, intent to administer, not just a mere throwing, okay? This article does not apply when physical injuries that result are less serious or slight. Because if specifically mentioned, any serious physical injuries, okay? So, again, this 
uh, provision of law is specific. It is only applicable to any serious physical injuries. Now, let's go to slight physical injuries and maltreatment. Under Article 266 of the Revised Penal Code, the crime of slight physical injuries shall be punished by arresto minor if the offender of physical injuries should incapacitate the offended party for labor for one to nine days or should have medical attendance during the same period. Fine, not exceeding 200 pesos and censure when the offender will cause physical injuries from preventing the offended party from engaging in his habitual work. If the offender will ill-treat without causing any injury, a fine not exceeding 50 pesos in its minimum period will be given. Okay? This is just a matter of reading, guys. Kinds of slight physical injuries punishable by the revised penal code. Physical injuries which incapacitate the victim for labor from one to nine days or requires medical attendance during the same period. So, this kind of injury requires a medical certification, okay? Because it is a matter of evidence during medical attendance or period of incapacity. In case of divergency, the doctor must always consider the interest of the victim in determining in the determination of said period. Okay? Physical injuries like a victim suffered from contusion or a superficial abrasion does not require any, any medical attendance and thus it's, it's considered as slight physical injury. Okay? If there is doubt, always choose the lesser crime. Okay? Slapping on the face, which do not even cause redness, is a form of ill treatment without causing any injury. If there is no evidence to show that actual injury, that there is actual injury, the accused can only be guilty of slight physical injuries. An injury with no sign of physical violence may still be considered as slight physical injuries or maltreatment. Okay? Because if there is doubt as to the crime, always choose the lesser offense. Now, let's go to physical injuries inflicted in a tumultuous affray. Okay? Under Article 252 of the Revised Penal Code, only serious physical injuries are inflicted upon the participants and the person responsible cannot be identified. All those who have used violence shall suffer the penalty. Okay? One ingredient of this crime is that those persons responsible are not identified. Okay? Physical injuries which are of less serious nature than the person responsible, therefore, cannot be identified and have used any violence shall be punished by arresto from 5 to 15 days. Okay? Elements of the crime. There is a tumultuous affray. Participants suffered from serious physical injuries. Okay? By tumultuous affray, it means there is rumble. Okay? There, there is ruckus. There is fighting. Okay? Persons who inflicted such, such serious physical injuries cannot be identified, okay? This is one main ingredient of this crime. The perpetrators cannot be identified. All those who appear to have used violence upon the person of the offended party shall be penalized by Aristo from 5 to 15 days. Medical classification of wounds. Classification as to its severity. As to the instrument used, as to the manner of infliction, as to regards to the depth of the wound, as to regards to re relation to the site of application of force and the location of injury, as to the type of wound. So, classification as to severity. Mortal wound, 
Wound is caused immediately after infliction or shortly thereafter, capable of causing death. Parts of the body where wounds are considered mortal are heart and big blood vessels, brain and upper portions of the spinal cord, the lungs, the stomach, liver, spleen, and intestine. Okay? These are critical areas, critical parts, I mean part. So, if these areas are wounded, then it can cause death. Non-mortal wound. Wounds which is not capable of causing death immediately after infliction or sh shortly thereafter. As to the instrument you Wound brought about by a blunt instrument can cause contusion, hematoma, lacerated wound. And then wound brought about by sharp instrument like sharp-edged instrument which, which caused incised wound, sharp-pointed instrument, which caused punctured wound, sharp edge and sharp-pointed instrument, which caused a stab wound. Wound brought about by tearing force, which creates a lacerated wound. And then wound brought about by change in atmos atmospheric pressure, which can cause barotrauma. And then wound brought about by heat or cold, which can cause frostbite, burns, or scald. Wound brought about by chemical explosion, like gunshot or sharpnel wound. And then wound brought about by infection. Okay? So, as to the manner of infliction, by heat, it means by means of a bolo or blunt instrument or axe through thrust or stab by the use of bayonet dagger, gunpowder explosion, which are projectile or sharpnel wound, and then slabbing or rubbing or abrasion. As regards to the depth of the wound, superficial wound involves the layer of the skin. Deep involves the inner structures beyond the layers of the skin. Penetrating. Wound agent enters the body but did not come out or there is no piercing of a solid body, organ, or tissue. Perforating. Wound agent produces communication between inner and outer portion of the organs. Okay? As regards to relation to the site of application of force, and the location of injury. Co-injury. Physical injury located at the site where force was applied at the site of injury. Contra co-injury. Found on the opposite side of the application of force. Okay? Co Contra co-injury. Physical injury located at the site and also at the opposite side of the force, okay, at both sides, okay. Locus minoris resistentia, physical injury not located at the side nor opposite the site of application of force, but in some areas offering least res resistance to the force applied. And then extensive injury, physical injury involving a greater part of the body beyond site of application of force, okay? These are just um, definition of terms, guys. These are just matters of reading, okay? Refer to your book. As to the type of wound, superficial, like, like petechia, contusion, hematoma. And then there's deep wound, which um, involves musculoskeletal injuries, sprain, dislocation, Strain, fracture, subluxation, factors responsible for severity of wound, okay? Like hemorrhage, size of injury, organs involved, shock, foreign body or substance introduced into the body, okay? Just a matter of reading. Hemorrhage. What is hemorrhage? 
Hemorrhage may influence severity of the wound by Hemorrhage means bleeding, okay? Number one, loss of blood incompatible with life. So in adult, blood constitutes, constitutes about 1 and 20th of the body weight. A loss of one-third to two-thirds of, of circulating blood may cause irreversible hypovolemic shock and may be fatal, okay? Loss of blood can be deadly. If blood is lost for a long period of time and is massive, the hem hematopoietic organs replace it thereby preventing adverse effects. Males can stand more, more blood loss than females. Hypertension causes rapid bleeding from arterial wounds and people suffering from hemophilia, clotting disorders, and people treating with anticoagulant have prolonged bleeding. Hemorrhage may cause an increase in pressure in the vital organs to affect the normal function. Okay? Intracranial hemorrhage, compression of vital centers of the brain, okay? inside the head. Hemopericardium, embarrassment of the contraction of the heart. Okay? The contraction of the heart is affected. Hemorrhage into the into chest cavity cause diminution of respiration and anoxia. Okay, uh, respiration is decreased. That's the meaning of diminution. Hemorrhage may cause mechanical barriers to the functions of organs. Hemorrhage in tracheobronchial lumina causes asphyxia, and in muscles causes disturbance in contractility. Okay. Are you following? Okay. Pulmonary hemorrhage may be due to tuberculosis, lung abscess, or bronchiectasis. Ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Spontaneous rupture of cavernous hemangioma or hepatoma. Rupture of enlarged spleen. Malaria, maybe due to malaria, infectious mononucleosis, typhoid fever, and it Size of injury. Burns. One third of the body surface is affected. Third degree type is fatal. Okay? Wounds. Bigger wounds are more exposed to infections and other physical conditions of the surroundings. Okay? The bigger the wound the dangerous it becomes due to infection. Organs involved. Trauma on vital organs of the body is serious and crushing wound of heart, brain, or lungs is fatal. Okay? It's dangerous. Shock. Shock occurs with or without violence. Slight blow on genitalia, bumps in children and older person, slight violence on head, and neck cause severe shock, okay? Violent traumas in healthy individuals may not produce shock, okay? Foreign body or substance introduced into the body. Incision of unsterilized scalpel is not as serious as bite of venomous snake. A foreign body is toxic and acts as a physical irritant, okay? It depends upon the origin of the foreign body. The foreign body or substance may be bacteria like tetanus, pathogenic microorganism. Okay? For example, you are hit by a rusty um, steel. Okay? It can cause tetanus. Example, a nail, a rusty nail. Viral. Like hydrophobia and can cause hepatitis. Foreign body, like bullet, glass fragments, shrapnels, gauze, or rubber drain. Chemical, like cyanide or nicotine. Toxin, like snake venom, scorpion, scorpion venom, coelenterate, sting, or jellyfish. Okay? These are substances or foreign bodies. Snake venom, 
Snake bite has two punctured wounds at the center of the affected area. Venom is injected through its fangs. Okay? Snake venom toxicity depends on okay, potency of venom injected. The amount of venom injected by the fang depends on season of the year and duration of time snake has eaten. Okay? The diet of the snake plays a role in the venom. Size of the patient, the immediate treatment given. Snake venoms are of two principal classes. First is neurotoxic. It paralyzes the respiratory and cardiac center of the brain. Symptoms would be nausea, vomiting, ascending paralysis, coma, convulsion, respiratory, and cardiac arrest. Second is hematoxic. It affects particularly the blood. Symptoms would be pain and swelling of affected area, intravascular hemolysis, nausea, vomiting, petechial hemorrhage on gums, pulmonary, and cardiac edema. Emergency treatment may be incision of wound to drain the venom, tourniquet above the site of the wound, placing ice on bite site, sucking the wound to drain venom with mouth, administration of anti-snake venom serum. And then, let's go to scorpion venom. It has neurotoxic, hemolytic, and hemorrhagic effect. It produces only one punctured wound. Symptoms would be pain, edema, and reddening. Coelenterate sting or jellyfish. Tentacles penetrate into skin and can cause explosion of nematocyst and liberation of venom. Symptoms would be extreme pain of affected area, urticarial rash, abdominal pain, dilated pupils, paleness, and labored breathing. Absence of medical or surgical intervention. A wound is not fatal, but, ne but negligence and ignorance in its management may cause serious effects and death. Fatality of wound. Wound may be directly fatal by reason of hemorrhage, an incised wound at any part of the body involving large or major blood vessel, for example, the carotid artery on the neck, portal vein, and so on. Mechanical injuries on the vital organs. A blow on the head may not necessarily produce external lesions, but may produce severe meningeal hemorrhage producing compression of the brain. A punctured wound of the heart, even though how small, may produce death on account of the tamponade of the heart. Shock. This is the disturbance of the balance of fluid in the body, capable of producing delayed or immediate death. Wound may be indirectly fatal by reason of Secondary hemorrhage following sepsis. A wound, because of its nature and location, is not capable of producing severe hemorrhage, but on account of infection that sets in. Deeper tissues are involved, including big blood vessels, thereby producing severe hemorrhage. Okay? So, it does not matter the location of the wound because... Uh, what is um, critical in this is the infection, okay? Specific infection. Pathogenic microorganisms may develop and multiply in the wound, causing septicemia, bacteremia, or toxemia. Tetanus, gas gangrene, infection are common in open wounds. Scarring effect. Chronic gonorrheal infection may cause a stricture of the urethria. Stricture of the esophagus may follow ingestion of ir irritant poison. Keloid formation in bones 
may not only cause deformity, but disturbance of the normal respiration of the locomotion. Secondary shock, nature of death due to secondary causes. A person may have recovered from the immediate effects of the trauma or violence, but may later die of its secondary effects or changes. Okay, the adverse effect. Okay, the secondary um, effect, the underlying factor of uh, the trauma that uh, leads to another um, injury. Okay. These changes may be classified as follows. Changes whose natural sequence are direct and obvious. Changes producing separate pathological lesions, which in turn proves to be fatal. Changes where a definite pathological condition was present before the injury. And then changes where a definite pathological condition of totally different nature arises after the wounding and the consequential sequence is doubtful. Okay, so um, it is more dangerous if there is already an underlying uh, illness because uh, it would aggravate, I mean, wounds can aggravate it. Okay, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask me because uh, this discussions are technical and tends to be boring because they are just matters of reading guys huh? okay now let's go let's go now to complications of physical injury okay these are the complications shock hemorrhage infection embolism okay under shock there is primary shock and secondary shock under hemorrhage, there is primary and secondary hemorrhage. Under embolism, there is fat embolism or air embolism. Factors that result in shock. It could be injury, anoxemia, or endothelial damage. Types of shock. There is primary shock. And there is secondary shock or delayed shock. Under primary shock, there is immediate nerve impulse. Due to vasomotor collapse, the impulse will the medulla. Thus, develop shock. Okay? It overwhelms the medulla. Patient may live longer if reaction is not intense. Okay? Under the secondary or delayed shock, there is impulse after some time, okay? There is time element. Low blood pressure, subnormal temperature, muscular incoordination, rapid and shallow respiration, severe, severe which leads to death or recover completely. Hemorrhage. It is the loss of blood in the cardiovascular system due to wounds. The degree of the hemorrhage depends on the size, location, kind of blood vessel cut. Primary. Bleeding occurs immediately after the injury. Secondary. Does not occur immediately. Sometimes on or near the injured area. Okay? should take note of the mm, degree of hemorrhage, whether it's primary or secondary. Because too much uh, loose in blood will cause death. Okay? The blood is the um, one of the most important component of life. Infection, growth and development of microorganisms at the site of injury. How injury acquires infection? Substance or instrument, okay, through bacteria. Deliberate introduction of microorganisms. Organs involved in, in the trauma, for example, bullet in intestine may cause split and, causing peri and cause peritonitis. 
indirect effect of injury due to lack of resistance, okay? And the age, okay? Whether or not the victim is immunocompromised, okay? Embolism, invasion of foreign particles in the bloodstream to cause the blockage of arteries, okay? Fat embolism, injection of oily substance into the circulation, injury of adipose tissue, okay? The cost of the occlusion is fat. Air embolism, gaping inside wound in jugular vein, injection of soap suds for criminal abortion, injection of air into the urinary bladder, injection of air into the nasal sinuses, okay? Classic Classic example of this is um, injection of air through IV, okay? Use of IV, intravenous fluid, and then, and then there's bubble. Healing of wounds, power of human tissue to regenerate. Regeneration is the replacement of destroyed tissue by newly formed similar tissue, okay? Following regenerates rapidly. Connective tissue, blood forming tissue, and surface epithelium of the skin. This has rapid uh, regenerations. Those having no power or limited capacity to regenerate, highly specialized glandular epithelium, smooth muscle, neurons of the central nervous system. Okay. Small clean cut wound is covered with lymph in 36 hours the edges adhere in two days and the wound heals on the seventh day leaving a linear scar larger incised wounds show swelling of the edges 8 to 12 hours blood stain serum is present in two days which afterwards becomes seropurulent on the third day lasting in state from four to five days Small red granulation forms in 12 to 15 days and the epithelium grows from the edges and then scar develops later, okay? So that's the process of wound healing. The time of healing of wounds depends on the following, vascularity or is the area high, uh, highly vascularized or there is uh, blood in it. Age of the person, degree of rest or immobilization, and nature of the in types of wound healing. There's primary intention, secondary intention, and tertiary intention. Okay, take note of this. In primary intention, the simplest form of wound healing. Skin is clear, cleanly incised. Example, closed with suture or staple. By secondary intention, wound heals by granulation. Granulation tissue builds up and fills the gap under the skin and cells epithelize from edge of the wound to create the closure. Examples, burns, pressure, pressure ulcers, and wounds with large piece of skin missing. Tertiary intention, leaves open wound to heal. Wound cannot be sutured. Dehiscence occurred or wound is infected. So, here is an example. Aberrated healing process. In some instances, healing process deviates from normal way on a normal individual. Healing may result to keloid formation, okay? As you can see in the illustration. And then, formation of exuberant granulation, okay? Then there's stricture, and that's an example of fistula right there. So these are the reference used. Uh, the book of Luis B. Reyes, the revised penal code book, and then the book of Leonor B. D. Boado, notes and cases on the revised penal code. And of course, the book of Pedro So. So... Uh, for this topic, that would be all. However, um, there are many topics to go. And uh, some topics are just matters of reading, guys, okay? But feel free to message me or ask me questions.
okay if you are confused or uh, there are uh, points that is not clear to you okay so thank you and god bless us all